Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, we're going to continue with part two mm -hmm. of our marriage series, and we're going to cover some things that uh, we got uh, some good feedback. We got a little, you know, a couple of people that I want to address uh, that, that, that didn't really um, uh, understand. understand what we were saying, so we, uh, we're going to cover some of those issues too, okay? But first of all, we want to um, we want to cover about a virtuous woman mm -hmm. because see, we're still before we we talk about coming together and actually being married. There's still some things we need to understand, and women, you need to understand what type of woman you need to be, and men, you need to understand the type of woman she needs to be, and and vice versa. So we're gonna start off by um, uh, talking a little bit about um, the virtuous woman. And let's turn to Proverbs chapter 31, and we're going to start reading at verse 10. And then also we're, we're going to cover what the man is to be like. Exactly. Um, so there's a, when, when you're entering into marriage, there's a role of the woman and there's a role of the man. That's and right. so that, that was going to be the purpose of this particular discussion. We want to see what both are supposed to do. Um, so that there is no confusion about how to enter into marriage. And we don't want the brothers to feel that they're being bashed. That's right. Because that was one of the things uh, that was brought to us. And, you know, some of the brothers felt like they were being bashed. That's right. And so what we're going to do today, we're going to maybe tone it down a bit. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to basically cover our roles. If we cover the role of the woman and the role of the man... From a biblical standpoint, then no one should feel as though they are being bashed because we're coming from the Word. We came from the Word last week, too, but we want the brothers and the sisters to understand that we have a role to play. Exactly. Okay, and your role is going to have to line up with the Word. That's right. And so um, we're going to start at um, verse 10 of Proverbs 31. We're not going to read it all the way through. We're going to take it part by part so that there is an understanding um, here. Reading it all the way through is good, but I want, I really want the sisters to understand um, the type of woman they are to be in its fullness, in its, complete, in its completeness, okay? So verse 10, it says, who can find a virtuous woman? Mm -hmm. For her price is far above rubies. So what does that imply to us? When, a, when the verse starts off, who can find a virtuous woman? <laughs> well, they're basically saying that it ain't going to be many out there who can find it, her. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be a lot of them out there. And he's telling you she's priceless. Mm -hmm. A virtuous woman is priceless. Mm -hmm. it, and it, it also says to me, that this is something that a brother's going to have to seek for. That's right. Because notice the scripture says, um, a man that findeth a wife finds a good thing. Okay? That's right. And is highly favored of Yah. That's right. You're highly favored if you can find a good wife. So that means sisters, um, this was almost like prophesying in the future that this woman is going to be hard to find and that brothers, if you want to find this jewel, you're going to have to look far and wide. That's right. And so, with that being said, um, the picture that we have seen in today's time, I can only focus on today because I don't know what they were seeing back then. In today's time, you can flick on any television program, any commercial, you can go on the internet and you see women twerking, you see women um, trying to be best friends with their teenage daughters and, and, and looking just as um, ratchet as they are. That's right. You know, we're, women aren't being good examples to their children. They're out there partying yeah, all night right. and doing all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And so this woman, this virtuous woman, is going to be difficult, very difficult to find. But we want to share with you some of the attributes of the virtuous woman. That's right. Uh, one thing, if you look at the next um, verse here, it, it tells you the heart of her husband do of safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Uh, now, that, this man, he can put his trust in this woman. 
you know, because this is the kind of woman that he has, you know. He, I remember when I first saw when me and my wife first got married, um, you know, I was out there working in the field and uh, working, and I had a lot of stress on me on the job and everything, you know. And my wife, she came to me, and she said, she said, you know what, I can't wait to, because we, we were starting a business and stuff, we were trying to get a business started. And my wife made the statement to me, and she said, she said, wow, I can't wait till she could, uh, to where we, our business is going, to where I could, uh, don't have to work anymore for these companies. This is her, this is how she felt about me going out there working. You know, she felt like, wow, I can't wait to, she wanted to, to figure a way to get me out from under these companies. You see, that's the type of woman, that's a virtual, that's a help me. Somebody who want to help me with my business and, and to do things that's going to benefit us. And I said the same thing too because at the time when we first got married, both of us was pretty much working. And I said the same thing. I said, man, I want to, I, I want it to the point to where you don't have to work at all. And that was my goal was to make sure that she didn't have to work. And, and, it, and it happened just like that, you know. At first, I was able to make it so that my wife didn't have to work, you know, and she was able to come out her job. And then, uh, then a, a, a couple of years later, uh, we we both worked so hard those years afterwards. Till then, I was able to quit my job and um, and stop working for these people. And then we were both working for ourselves. Then, you know, and it came with a lot of struggle in the beginning too. But we had the mindset. We had the mindset that we were going to see the Most High's vision for our lives through, That's and right. we weren't going to hinder this vision. That's right. I mean, we can. I mean, he gave you the short version of how things went in the beginning of all of this. That's right. I mean, the short version was that, you know, here we are now doing just what the Most High has shown us we were going to do. But leading up to this, um, I'll put it to you this way. There was a time, and let me tell you how much my husband loved his wife and children. Okay, of course we didn't have this many children at the time. But when we first got married, the struggle was so hard on us. Sure. I remember this man went three times, three times in one week yep. and gave blood. That's right. He gave blood three times. Just so we can have enough money for, to, food. for some food. You know, and that's how hard we had it when, I, when I, we first got married. We were struggling really, really bad, you mm -hmm. know. But I did whatever it was I had to do to make sure that my wife and my kids had, had food. Mm -hmm. And so when, I, when we were talking, and we, and people seemed like, you know, one brother, he responded because he, he thought that we were bashing men. And what he got to understand is, you know, the scripture, listen to the scripture in Joel, in the book of Joel, uh, chapter 3. Turn to Joel, chapter 3, and look at verse um, 10 here. This is the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 10. Uh, this is what it says. It says, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I'm strong. Mm -hmm. So now, this, you know, we got to understand, even though we got some weak brothers out there, we are at a time now where we got to quit focusing on our weakness. Mm -hmm. You weak brothers out there, it's time for you now to, sh to shed this weakness and put on strength. Mm -hmm. Doesn't the scripture say in Isaiah, it says, awake, awake, put on strength, O Zion. Mm -hmm. Put on strength. Mm -hmm. Why does it tell us to put on strength? Let the weak. Say that you're strong. Mm -hmm. Why? Because really you're strong. Mm -hmm. You see, I, I noticed this one thing. Now, you, you take the so-called weak brothers that I was talking about in the last video. They are strong when it comes to doing their wickedness, though, aren't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you think about that. Everybody got strength. It depends exactly. on what they use it for. That's right. Everybody got strength. Everybody is strong to do something. You see, I noticed that... Um, one time, I know uh, years ago, I knew this one drug dealer, okay? And this drug dealer was an excellent business person. And I said, oh, you don't have to do it for drugs. You can take that same business mind and mm -hmm. use it in the business industry. Why do it, Real do something wicked? Mm -hmm. You can use the same energy that you push toward wickedness and use it toward good. Good is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So basically, these brothers, these so-called 
uh, uh, weak brothers, and we were talking about the weak brothers and all this. We're trying to provoke you to put on strength, mm -hmm. put on the strength of Yah, and quit crying and, and whining about this and whining about this. Let's be strong, brothers. You know, the scripture spoke about a man being the strong man of his house, mm -hmm. and that the wicked person can't come into a man's house and spoil his goods except he bind the strong man. Mm -hmm. But he ain't going to bind a strong man. If you're a strong man, he come up in there, that strong man going to do what? He going to grab that man and throw him out of his house. And he won't allow his goods to be suffered, to, to be uh, spoiled. Mm -hmm. You see, he won't allow his family to be spoiled and the things that he owns. So basically, we have to be strong men. Mm -hmm. You see, in the story of um, Gideon, what did he say to Gideon? He told Gideon, he called him a what? A mighty man of valor. Mm -hmm. What did Gideon do? Gideon looked around like, like who? Who are you talking about? He said, I'm talking about you. Mm -hmm. You a mighty man of valor. Mm -hmm. You see? But we want to put on weakness. We want to be weak. Mm -hmm. And the scripture, the, the most high want us to put on strength. Mm -hmm. Be strong mm -hmm. in Yah and in the power of his might. Mm -hmm. So we, instead of us being beat down by society and by the world, and we can sit and say, yeah, 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 but we can't get a job, make a job. And if you can't get a job, then you make a job. You go out, you do what you have to do righteously to earn money, to do whatever it is you have to do, because that's what, that's your part. Mm -hmm. And the Most High will back you on it. You see, he will open up doors for you. If your heart is right and you seek him right, he will open up those doors. You mm -hmm. see, I am a witness to it because I we had a hard life. I had a hard life before I got married. So that after I got married, it, when me and my wife, we um, uh, come together, we thought things were going to be easier. And things, we still went through a hard struggle financially, you know. Mm -hmm. But we hung in there. I didn't, uh, um, I could have gotten easily weak. And say, oh, you know what? I just can't take this no more. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I got a wife and kids, but it's too much of a struggle. You know, I, I'm out of here. A lot of men do that to, in today's time. They can't take the responsibility. They can't take the struggle. And they give in. And the Most High has commanded us to be strong and to raise our kids, raise our families, and be good to our wives. You know, and the scripture says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make That's you free. Right. And like my husband just said, you are strong man of valor, a mighty man of valor. That's right. Once you realize the truth, okay, you can walk in that truth. And that truth is this. Because we are in the land of our captivity, because of our sins, the curses are evident in our lives. But right. once you know the truth, then those curses should begin to lift off of your life. That's why you see some of us walking in a different path than others. Right. You know, Whatever, whatever sin that is present in your life, you're gonna you're gonna see it reflected in your life. That's right. But once you know the uh, the truth about something, then you should walk in that truth. Okay. That's right. So if you're a mighty man of valor, you have to show that in your life. That's right. You can't just walk around. And I and I'm talking to those brothers who um, seemed somewhat offended by our last message. Okay. Again, like my husband stated, we are trying to encourage both the men and the women to That's do right. right and to do walk right. in the truth. Right. And um, I mentioned to one of the brothers um, that had responded on the video that, you know, he had addressed the fact that what if a man can't get a job? What if he can't do this? What if this? What if that? Okay, brother, I want to say, first of all, um, we understand all these That's things. Right. We understand that in this land of the so-called free and brave we, we know it's not that okay we it's know that this us, right? land um the rules and the laws that have set forth in this land was made to divide you black brothers from us black sisters we That's know right. this okay and so that is going to be difficult at times Hello.
Hi, I'm a random white woman. Did you know that every year over 80,000 innocent black men are neglected, abused, battered, and even malnutritioned by undeserving women? Yes, that's right, even light-skinned black men. Cruelty does not discriminate. But together, we can make a difference. Join us at the White Women Society for the Prevention of Cruelty Against Black Men, the WWSPCABM, and help us rescue hundreds of defenseless black men every day. These men don't need much, just need a soft place to rest their heads. Some minutes for their cell phone plan? Mm -hmm. Some, ew, no, nah, no. Nah. Oh. <laughs> and a pack of Newports every now and then. No, 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 backwards, baby. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Join us and donate today. <laughs> With your contribution, white women and some white men all across America are waiting to rehabilitate these beautiful black men. <laughs> Uh, Reggie, you missed a spot. I can make you happy, make your and with your support, we will send you a personalized photo of a black man in the hands of a good white woman. Go to the end of the earth Remember to report cruelty if you see it. Thanks to you, these black men can have a second chance at happiness. Call the number below today. I stated to you that, you know, there was a time where we actually hired some brothers that were out of prison. Okay, because you said, what if a brother came out of prison and he can't get a job? Um, the brothers that we dealt with were some of our best workers, some of our best employees, some That's of right. our most loyal. So not everyone is sitting in judgment of our brothers who have been to prison. That's right. Okay. Exactly. And not everybody's situation is the same. That's some right. brothers went to prison because they deserved to go. Some went because the system was just wrong and treated them wrong and they should have right. never been there. Okay. And so I believe it was the most high. Uh, I really believe that it was the most high that led this one particular brother to us because he was so faithful. He was so hardworking sure. and we had nothing but love for this brother. And to this day, if we could find him, we would love to, to have him under our employ again. That's right. Okay. So nobody is bashing our brothers. We're just trying to get you all to see that there is a part that the men of Judah especially have to play. That's and right. your role is supposed to be as leaders. And how do you become a true leader? You can't lead your people if you don't have the truth. That's right. Okay, because you will cause all of us to go astray. The Most High actually said that was going to be one of the punishments. He said, I'm going to take away the wisdom. I'm going to take your wise men from among you. That's right. So that's why you have so many false doctrines being taught. So both men and women are out here teaching things. I mean, you have women actually teaching their young girls how to be whores. Okay, <laughs> so right. it cuts both ways. That's right. You have some brothers out here teaching young brothers how to be pimps, how to be haters of women, how to be women yeah. beaters and bashers and all kinds of things. So, you know, we are all in a mess together. And I also That's wanted right. to address the fact that the brother said um, the sisters back in the 70s turned on the brothers. I think it's very important that I address that because you all see this thing the wrong way because yeah. that is not what happened. Okay, and you're basically saying that the, the women chose the government, the government checks over the men. So I have to ask you this question. Back during those times, and you know, we watched a documentary that actually talked about this, how the government pretty much said that if you want to get benefits, food assistance or money or anything to take care of your children, mm -hmm. that that man has to skedaddle. He has to get out, okay? This is what one of the rules were. And so the, men, the women were left with this decision. Either I um, put him out so that I can feed my children and so that I can have a roof over my head, or um, I let him stay. And in mo most cases, these women weren't married 
okay? Because I believe this was only to those who were not married to this man, okay? Um, if you're not married but you have children together um, and the man isn't working, what was she supposed to do? What was her choice if you don't have a job, brother? Okay, yeah. it wasn't that the woman chose the government and the check over you. It's just that she said, well, my kids got to eat. So they put the woman and the man in that catch-22. Yeah. So stop making it seem as though this was an attack against you from the black woman. No, this was an attack yeah, the on the black from, relationship right. from the system. From the system. They said, I'm going right. to tear these Negroes apart, and this is how I'm going to do it, because I know she's going to choose to feed her children and have housing for her children, and she's going to tell them you have to hit the road. Okay? Right. So I, I really wish you all would stop trying to say that women rose up against men because it didn't happen like that. I was born around that time, and I saw how my mother struggled with raising us. You know, what the government was giving her wasn't much at all. So to say that this was the choice she wanted, mm -hmm. no, that is not how it was. My mother wanted to be in a, in a wonderful, loving relationship. The, uh, the other part of that, the other aspect of this was that um, we witnessed our mother being abused. Okay, so give me the choices that a woman have if she's being abused if she's being mistreated, mm -hmm. if the man is unable to take care of her. Because of our sins, the Most High put us in the situation where we were going to be ruled over by our enemies. So please, brothers, stop looking at it as if the women dropped the ball on all of this and chose the government over you because it, it's not that way at all. See, the thing is, when you have a wicked system that's controlled by the enemy that's trying to destroy um the black family he's actually trying to destroy the black family so he has set up things and and made things a certain way so that the, the 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 black man and the black woman will be at odds against each other you see what i'm saying so so basically we got to understand who who is actually doing this we uh, uh, the black race have been manipulated for years by the system so now Instead of pointing the finger and saying, oh, it's the black woman that did this, or it's the black man that did this, we need to look at who's actually causing these things to happen, and then we need to figure out a way around these things, you see? Because you, you can't expect a woman who, who, who has a, a young man that she's with, well, first of all, you know, they had, they had kids, they weren't married, so you know the most high, right away, the most high is going to want to bring judgment because you're not trying to walk in the ways. So the man, he should have married her. The woman, she she ain't got the power to look at that man and say, hey, marry me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's the man that has to ask the woman to marry him. So a lot of times these men weren't marrying these women. You all know. Come on now, brothers. Come on now. Let's, let's look at the facts, okay? Okay, you know, you know, in the black community, we're like pimps. You know it. You know it. I, every young man I knew growing up was a player. Every last one of them. Rare in my life that I could look at the brothers that I grew up with, uh, even growing up, my older brothers, my friends, my, my brother's friends, their parents, players. Most other men were players, and I'm talking about, I'm, I'm, I'm 50 years old. So we're talking about a good... 40 years that I've seen me number of players and men. Okay, so come on now. Men need to lead a plan alone and they need to get serious. And when they get out here and they have a relationship with a woman, you need to marry this woman. She's a good woman. Marry this woman. She's good enough to sleep with. She ain't good enough to marry her. Huh? So basically, that's what the problem is. These men, they want to play the field. And all I'm saying is, you brothers out here, you need to quit trying to play the field. Quit trying to bring the play in the field into your. Because that ain't going to work either. You need to get yourselves together. If you're having a struggle with getting a job and working and doing these things, keep pressing. Don't give up. I don't care how bad it is out here. I don't care what you're going through. I've been through it too. Okay? I want you to understand that, brothers. I've been through it too. I've been through beat down so bad by the system out here until I felt like I couldn't even walk. But the Most High put strength in me, told me to get up, keep fighting. Don't give up. And that's what the problem is. We're giving up too much. We get beat down to a point. We just give up. That should make you madder. You see, that should make you angrier. 
You understand what I'm saying? Take a lion for instance. We're, we're, we're what? Lions. You see? Yahshua is the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's right. We're lions. You take a lion out here and you let some, some um, he get into a fight. He gets angrier. But something come and try to take that lion's food. Did he just lay there and die? Yeah. If I sit you here and die. Yeah, he you know, gets that angrier. Lion, you say, you know what? I'm hungry. You hungry. And you're trying to take what's mine. No, I'm going to fight for this. Yeah. Because that's what you brothers have to do. He going to get. You have he, to put on that strength. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'll I never forget the day that um when I, I, I was trying to get this job at this hospital. And I had a, my brother. He was a, just wicked. You know, one of my brothers. This wicked brother, he was into all kinds of stuff, you know. He goes up here to the hospital, and they just hands him this job, right? <laughs> and I was just at the hospital, filled out the application. Here I am, living righteous, filled out the application. They didn't even, they didn't even call me for an interview or nothing. So I didn't just give up. You know what I did? I went right back up to that hospital, right back to the lady who took my application and everything. And I said, look here, ma'am. I said, I put in an application the other day. And was, she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. We reviewed the applications. We just don't have no positions available. I said, I said ma'am, I said, all due respect, I'm not trying, trying to, um, um, you know, be disrespectful in any kind of way. I said, but my brother was up here last week. He put in an application the same time I did, and you gave him a job, okay? And I said, I need a job, too. And she said, well, I'm telling you, we just don't have any. I said, I said ma'am, ma'am, I said, I need a job. I really need a job bad. I said, um, I, is there anything around here that I can do? I said, I'll be the best worker that you all have. Just if you give me a chance, give me the job, you'll see I'll be the best worker here. I said, just please, is there something? Lady just started laughing. <laughs> she sold it. Lady started laughing. And she said, okay, 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 okay. Let me see what I have for you. And she pulled it out and she had a whole bunch of jobs. You hear that? <laughs> had a whole list of jobs. She said, well, would you like to do patient transportation? I said, yes, yes, you yes. know. And you know what's funny? When I, when I went uh, for the interview and they gave me another interview, right? And then I had to go and take a physical. Took the physical. The doctor looked at my feet and she said, oh, my goodness. You can't, you can't work this job because you have flat feet. She said, if you work this job in less than a month or two, you will have bad back problems, leg problems. I looked at that lady. I said, look here, ma'am. I said, let me worry about my feet and my back. Okay? I said, I will deal with it. Okay? I need this job. I said, don't let my feet keep me from getting a job. Okay? I said, I need it. And the lady sat there and she laughed. The doctor, she laughed. And she said, okay, 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 we'll give you the job. You know, and I was like, okay. You know, like, man, my brother, though, they didn't put him through none of that. Wicked as can be. <laughs> he didn't have to go through any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But all I'm saying to you brothers is that you need to press forward. I don't care persevere. what door closed in your face. Persevere. I don't care what no, how many no's you get. You get a hundred no's. No, no, no. You keep pushing. Keep pushing. And you keep living according to what the Most High wants you to do. You do the things. You live according to His Word. And I guarantee you that those doors will open. You see? The Most High don't put nothing on nobody that they can't deal with. You see? You can endure it. We are more than conquerors through Yahshua. And with those words, we just want you to be encouraged, brothers and sisters. That's be right. encouraged that we can do this thing. If we, if we go according to the will of the Father, we can do this. You know, I'm going to go back into um, our Proverbs 31. So you brothers who are out here looking for a sister, you want to look for these things, okay? You want to look for these things so that when you do enter into a covenant of marriage, you can look proudly at your wife. You can look proudly That's at the right. woman that you have chosen. Okay? All of the, the things my husband just spoke of is to encourage you. That's right. Okay? To be strong first. This, this is what you want to be like before you marry someone. That's before right. you choose a bride, you want to be that strong man who's going to persevere. So you'll never have to worry about a woman um, questioning your ability to take care of your family. Okay? Or questioning your strength or your relationship with the Father. That's right. Um, get yourself to the point of what my husband was just saying to where um, you're going to enter into it a strong man already. Okay? That's right. And so that's going to better your chances of having a successful marriage. 
So one of the things, I mean, or, or here's a list of the things that you want to look for when you're looking for a wife. Because you know the scripture says, he that finds a wife finds a good thing. I have to reiterate that because a wife is supposed to be a good thing for you brothers. Okay, it's supposed right. to be a good thing. It's not supposed to be a struggle and a, um, a strain or a stress to be married. It's not supposed to be that way. That's right. And if it is that way, like we said before, we have got to look in the mirror. The woman has got to look in the mirror. The man has got to look in the mirror and see where they have failed. That's and right. also see where our lives are in conjunction with the word. That's right. Okay, now in verses 12 and 13, or maybe even read a little bit further just so we can keep this moving. Mm -hmm. It says that she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her handmaidens. Here's the one that I really want you, you guys to t um, pay attention to. It says, She considereth a field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a, a vineyard. Now, when I think of this woman that this scripture is referring to, this woman sounds like a busy woman to me. She is um, selling goods. She's making goods. That's she's working right. with her hands. She's out here buying <laughs> land, y'all. This woman is out here making decisions. She considers a field and buys it. Okay? Now, we know that the understanding that we have today, common sense will tell you that she's not going to just go into the bank account and just go and buy some land without talking to her husband first. Right. But when it talks about the husband trusting in this woman, there this man is saying, you know what, I trust her judgment. My wife thinks that this land over here is a good deal for yep. us. She thinks that this is something good that we should invest in. That's okay? Right. Bring it into perspective today, okay? This man trusts her enough to say, well, you know what, I think that's a good decision. So for all of you brothers who think that the, whim, the women have no say-so in anything, that she is just to serve, sit down and shut, shut up, up, go in the kitchen, and cook, and do all of that with brothers. What you're doing is you're actually shooting yourself in the foot mm -hmm. because you have a helpmate. Mm -hmm. And let, let me say this here real quick. I want you to understand something. Mm -hmm. A helpmate, when the scripture talks about a woman being a, 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 a man's wife and that she's a helpmate, it talks about they two being one flesh. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now you listen to this here. It's almost like it's two of me here. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now. You got to ask yourself, if it's two of you trying to handle something out here, isn't that greater than just one? But see, when you take your wife and you and you shut her mouth and you lock and tie her hands off, bind her own up and tell her, nope, this is all you can do. You cook, you clean, and that's it. You know, you had them babies, cook and clean and, 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 um, and, and, and in the bed and all of that kind of stuff. That's it. Okay? What you're doing is... You're really, you're really shooting yourself in the foot. You're actually cutting half of you off and putting the half of you away in some type of chest. And then you're going to try to handle the rest of it yourself. That's like a man splitting himself up the middle and, and going to try to walk with one leg, one arm, and only see with one eye and smell with one part of his nose. and It, it just ain't going to work. And what you don't realize, that's why the most hasty day two shall be one flesh. Because you could get much more accomplished when you two come together. And I am a true witness to that in our life. And there are other brothers and sisters that I know that are just like us. That the Most High have blessed with this type of relationship. And it, it's, it's wonderful. Because I can trust my wife's decisions in business and in other things. And we work together in those things. Absolutely, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I, I praise the Father that we have this biblical understanding That's of how right. things are to be. We have to understand when we go in Scripture and we look at examples of relationships and marriages and all kinds of things, there are several examples, just like today there are. That's right. You know, a lot of brothers like to look at Solomon and talk about how many wives he had and all of this. Not every brother in the Bible had that many wives, y'all. Okay, everybody Solomon was a king. Right, he was a king. You know, David was a king, okay? Absolutely. 
You know, we all have different examples to look at, but don't just pick the ones that suits what your flesh wants, okay? Because there are also examples in Scripture to where women um, had greater roles than what men try to give them today. Men try to use a, a couple of New Testament Scriptures to shut the women up. But when you look at our people of ancient times, things were totally different. So we have to ask ourselves, what is going on now? What kind of deception has entered into our minds that want us to believe that the woman's sole job is to shut up. What has happened? Because the scripture even tells us that in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's it says right. your sons and your, daughters and your daughters shall prophesy. Okay? So for those of you who think that the woman has nothing to say, that she's not to speak. And that the most high don't, <laughs> don't speak to the woman. You, you're wrong because how is she going to prophesy if... He don't speak to it. Absolutely. <laughs> and and how is the woman going to do anything if the Most High don't deal with them? You know, I'm reminded of a story in Scripture where it, it's in the Apocrypha where the men of Israel came to Judith. Okay, That's and I right. talked about this before. And they said, look, Sister Judith, we need you to pray because our enemy is going to be attacking in five days and we need you to go to the Father. Now, the Most High don't deal with women were these men then in error? Were they in error to approach the sister and say, we need you to go to the Father on our behalf? No. Then that got to tell you that there's some teaching that's going forth today that, like my husband said, is causing brothers to shoot themselves in the foot. That's right. You know, I find it quite amazing that many times um, when it comes to scriptures, um, I've, I've had a, a few brothers tell me that we're not even supposed to utter words of scriptures. In, in various comments on Facebook and YouTube. And I'm saying, wow, that's some deep stuff. I ain't never seen that scripture before. But it says that women ain't supposed to utter words in scripture at all. Because that's a form of teaching. And, you know, it's like um, it really don't line up with the word. And I think we're, we're getting too much into um, what has been taught by the Western nations. Because they were very oppressive to their women. And we don't understand that many times in scripture the most high... Um, dealt with his, his women. He dealt with the daughters of Zion. I mean, look at the case of Rebecca when she carried Jacob and Esau in her womb. Yeah. Who did the Most High come and explain what was happening in her belly? Did That's he go right. to Isaac and tell him? No, he came to Rebecca and told her what was going on in her womb and how there was going to be two nations separated from her bowels. He had to explain it to her because... Esau would have gotten the blessing from Isaac if, if he had to go to Isaac and tell him. That's the right. Most High knew that he had to go to Rebekah because she would have understood what his will was. That's and right. that's why he went to her and not um, Isaac. So we have to understand that the word needs to be put into perspective when we're trying to teach um, everyone who what the role of everyone is. You know, that's right. The word has to be put into perspective so that we are not... Um, basically killing the family structure. We want to make it clear that we know that the man is the head of the woman. The man is the head of the woman. But we also want to make it clear that help meet does not mean slave. That's it does right. not mean slave. Um, one thought I was trying to cover, um, I find it pretty amazing that a lot of brothers, when it comes to certain things, they don't want the woman to speak. But if a woman... Um, had um, a lesson to teach you about business to where you can make a million dollars, okay? She's very well versed in, in business and very smart and wise and stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah. Um, all of a sudden, you would throw that thing about women teaching out the door. Why is that? <laughs> yeah, why is why that? Why is it that it's okay for her to teach you how to make a million dollars, but it's not okay for her to spit one verse of scripture? Yeah. You know, it's amazing, like you're saying, it's just amazing if they think that a woman, that Yah don't talk to women and that he don't say things to women. But uh, the, uh, to, but I'm, I'm going to show you something here. Now, this ain't the case of even a Hebrew um, Israelite woman, okay? This isn't a Hebrew Israelite woman, but I'm going to show you where the Most High not only spoke to this woman, but he had a huge blessing for this woman and her children, okay? And it's in the scriptures. You can turn to... Uh, Genesis chapter 21, and we're going to look at verse 17 here. It says, and Yah, or God in your scriptures, and Yah heard the voice of the lad 
talking about Ishmael. And the angel of Yah called Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad when he is where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, and I will make him a great nation. Okay? So, so what's going on here? Huh? Mm -hmm. So, you want to make it seem like the Most High don't deal with women completely and just, nope, he don't say nothing to them. He don't have no messages for them. He don't have this. He don't have that. Uh, I beg to differ. Now, I understand that when Yahshua, he went out and he chose um, uh, his, the, his apostles, that he chose all men. I understand that. I'm perfect. Um, I'm in, in total agreement with you on that, okay? That the most high he chose men to go forth and to bring forth his word and to preach his word, okay? I understand that. And I'm not sitting up here saying that a woman should be an apostle or a, a bishop or a, a, a preacher or a pastor. We're not saying any of that. So don't misinterpret anything that we're saying here. What we're simply saying here is that sometimes the Most High can deal with the woman and can speak to a woman. Because I'm here to tell you something. There were a number of times when we were first going into business. And like I say, I, I'm so thankful that the Most High blessed me with a virtuous woman. And I'm thankful that he blessed me in and and made me to see that I, I have to listen to my woman on certain to my wife on certain things. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. When we were getting into business, there were a couple of times where I was totally just stern about certain things. And nope, nope, we're not gonna do that. It's impossible. That ain't gonna work, that ain't gonna work. And my wife would sit there, she said, Honey, I'm telling you, I, this is what we should do. We should go in this direction. We should do this over here. We should do that over here. And I would sit there and be so strong. And then, and then finally, the most I put it on my heart, just go on and do what your wife is saying here. And no kidding you, it, was, it would be a huge blessing. So then it got to the point where I started to say, well, whoa, wait a minute. I said, I got to start really listening to some of the things that my wife is talking about when it comes to, to come to business and and other things too, and it wasn't just business and other things. It's even in Yah sometimes because when 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 the the thought of us being a Hebrew Israelites first came into our life, it came to my wife first. <laughs> How did I respond when you were when you come telling me about the Hebrew Israelites and all? That? <laughs> oh, the response was just so funny to me. <laughs> now that I look back and I thank the Father that uh, we are where we are now. Yeah. <laughs> but initially, my husband said he was going to forbid me to look at these videos anymore and do right. any more research about it because he was like, if we were the people, <laughs> then um, why do those folk over there know the language? They got the land, they know the language, so those are the people. That's right. And um, <laughs> I was literally in tears, okay, yep. because at first, you know, I was thinking that we were the Egyptians. Well, my husband had me thinking that we were the Egyptians and um, that the, the Gentiles were um, dealt with and the Jews were dealt with. I said, so if the Egyptians aren't Gentiles, you know, I said, what are we, the, the junk that's left over? You know, so we nothing then, huh? You know, <laughs> I was so yeah. distraught about all of that. And I just, I really pleaded for my husband. I said, look, I, I think we, can we just check into it? Yeah. I said, can we find out let, where let these people, you. those so-called Jewish people come from? Can we at least do that? You know, you know, before. Yeah. <laughs> and she's saying, you know what's funny? I was getting so frustrated with it. I was like, I was like, a woman going there and sh shut up like the script. You know, they, <laughs> they go to the scripture, woman, mouth shut. I don't want to hear no more about this. We are not this, the people. The Hebrew thing, you know? And then finally my wife said, can you at least research these Jews and find out if they're the people? Because I'm telling you, it's just something about this whole thing. So I, I sat there and I said, well, let me just, uh, I went on the internet research Jews. I said, they the people, they the people, they the people. Then I came across this Khazar Jew thing. And I said, whoa, Khazars? I said, what's that about? So I got the research and I said, oh my goodness, they're not the people over there. I said, so, if they're not, then who are they? Who are the people then if they are if not? they're not, that's right. And then it's like the most I put this in my mind. He put this in my mind. 
I said the, the so-called children of Israel were slaves in Egypt. That's and right. because I knew the Egyptians were black. That's right. I said, well, you know what? I think I'm going to look up some images of Egyptian slaves. And when I saw these black people, I said, that's us. Yeah. We were the slaves on That's the right. wall in Egypt. That's right. They were black. They were not white. And so from there, it's like the Most High began to flood us with all of this knowledge. But as my husband pointed out, and I didn't even know he was going to talk about this. <laughs> um, as he pointed out, he was sternly against me researching right. this or going any further into it. That's right. And, and my persistence as his wife, like, can we just do the research? Can we just check it That's right. out? Can we just look into this thing? Um, as a result, we are sitting here, and we know that we are the people. That's right. And my hu my husband basically humbled himself against, you know, heeding he heeded to the voice of his wife. That's right. And uh, even Abraham, the Most High, told him, "Heed Abraham, to the voice of your wife." That's heed right. to the voice of your That's wife. That's right. As it related to putting Hagar and Ishmael out, so that the blessing. Um, would go on to Isaac. The Most High told him to That's heed right. to the voice of his wife. So we're not trying to pro promote any wifely hierarchy in anything. That's right. <laughs> we're just trying trying to say that, brothers, when you want to shut the woman up and Light everything, up. yeah, it's the, the scripture <laughs> never intended for you to say that the woman has no say in anything and that our only job is to serve the man and to do all of this as though the women are meant to be slaves because there are many examples in scripture as we have pointed out to where the woman was far more than a servant That's okay right. the woman had dealings with the most high that were outside of her husband That's right. okay the woman had dealings in business the woman was wise okay the men of israel came to the women sometimes and said look we need you to go to the father for us so all of this stuff just don't line up with this new doctrine that's going forth. You know, um, one sister asked me to look at a video where, you know, the brothers were bashing the sister so bad. I said, you know, I can't even look at this sister because, you know, this stuff is too vulgar. I mean, one of the brothers actually said that black women ain't nothing but pieces of, okay? Tell them to shut the, shut the blank up, you know? Okay, and, and I said, whoa, <laughs> show me that in scripture to that's how you're supposed to treat your woman or your wife. That is totally off base. Okay, and for all of you brothers who think that that's how it's supposed to be and that you're righteous in this, remember one of the punishments that the Most High gave on the men of Israel, particularly the men of Judah, was that you were going, that the women are going to see your men die by the edge of the sword. Okay? You hear that? And that our, our men you were going to die right. because of their treachery against the Most High and choosing women of a strange nation. Right. And so we see a lot of that going on here in America to where our brothers are bashing the sister and choosing uh, the sisters and choosing women of other nations. And, and you've even taken it a step further to where you're calling the daughters of Zion some horrific names. OK, we understand, brothers, that you have been hurt in the past by various things. And we and we know it's some it is some wickedness going on here that, that, that some of the daughters of Zion are, are haughty with their neck stretch and all of the things that the scriptures say. We understand all those things, but you can't put every daughter of Zion in that in that uh, boat because they're not in that boat. If they're out here and they're doing wickedness, they call it what it is. I understand that. But when they ain't out here living like whores and, and doing all that kind of stuff, you can't call them that. I've seen some perfectly righteous sisters who have been treated so bad and treated so horribly to where they cry at night and they're weeping and moaning because brothers are mistreating them, okay? But what we have to understand, why is this happening? You know, I, I, I do see a lot of finger pointing coming from both sides. That's because we both, the men and the women, refuse to see our true enemy, okay? I'm going to bring the music industry into this for a minute, okay? If we go back to the 60s and the 70s, yeah. we're going to see a lot of love songs to where they were saying, and I will love you so for always. <laughs> you know, they were singing to each other, endless love, my girl. They were talking about how much they loved each other, yeah. you know, and... Now that the devil has decided, you know what, I think I'm going to take over this music thing because I see, you know, there was a, a video where they were saying the CIA actually studies us. They study our music. They study everything that we like. 
And they study us so much to where they know us better than we know ourselves. And so they say, you know what, we're going to infiltrate the music industry. We're going to change the message now to where no longer is the black man going to be talking about how much he loves his woman. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to only promote the songs to where he's talking about she ain't nothing but a B, she ain't nothing but an H, right. a, a whore. Um, um, Brenda's got a big old butt. I know I told you I'll be true, <laughs> but Brenda's got a big old butt, so I'm leaving you. These are the songs that they started to introduce into the black community to where it's all about B's and H's, tricks, uh, this woman is this, this woman is that. That's right. And the abuse is off the chain. Now, so that's where that's the only thing people want to hear. Now, guess what? When you look at the songs that women sing, though, look at some of the songs. Look how sad they are. <laughs> look at they, they used to um, talk about yeah, they used to talk song. about Tony Braxton how she was always singing these sad songs mm -hmm. about some man and did her wrong and did and, and why are, why have her songs changed to sadness but the men's songs changed to calling them um, whores and everything else mm -hmm. you see that's because you can see a pattern there mm -hmm. you can see a pattern that's why because these men have gotten cold toward these women yeah. and that's why that's all they got to sing now just sad song. Because this man, he didn't left me for another woman, and me and cheating like that, and it's just, it is what it is. You can't get away from that. So think about how the music has impacted yeah. us. Yeah. You know, it, it, I mean, it did start back then, but most of the songs, when you look at the majority of them, they were love songs. But then you started to get the Mrs. Jones and stuff like that thrown in there, Secret Lover, stuff like that, that actually put it in your head that like, it's good to tip on the side. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's good to do have all this little monkey business on the side. They use the music to program us because um, some of us are simple-minded, y'all. That's right. I'm sorry, but we don't want to be righteous. You know, that there's one scripture that actually talks about how his children are foolish and stupid people. To do right, they don't know how to do that, but to do yeah. evil, they know that very well. Yeah. The scripture actually said that about the children of Israel. So it's very easy for us to be nip manipulated by media, music, movies, whatever. Very easy for us. So we got to ask ourselves, is that a good thing? No, it's not a good thing. And our children grew up around this. One thing I can't stand to see is when a mother or a father allows their children to do vulgar, wicked things on camera, mm -hmm. and they cheering them on in the background. <laughs> you got a little girl and little boy. I mean, they showed several videos to where little boys humping little girls. And you got the grown-ups. Standing by, cheering them on. Like, look at that. Oh, they having contests with this stuff, y'all. Yeah. They talking about this this couple over here. What couple? The the little two five year olds. They won the freak contest. You know that's what's going on, and the grown ups are actually promoting this. Mm -hmm. So we got to look at ourselves, people. That's right. Are you a virtuous mother? <laughs> and are you a husband or a man that's trying to elevate your family? Or are you participating in the demise of your family? That's right. And so that's what we see happening. And we've got to come better than this, people. We've got to come better. Yeah. yeah one thing, too, I want to uh, uh, mention this again, too. You know, a lot of men don't understand uh, this relationship between husband and wife. You know, you men, you brothers out there, you got to lighten up a little bit, you know. One thing I learned about the Most High and one thing I learned about men is men are very prideful. We are very prideful. So then we see these scriptures, well, I'm going to shut up and I'm the man and I'm the head. And we walk around and we just literally, uh, um, um, me, 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 I'm, 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 all this pride. Now, what does the Most High do? What does the scripture say concerning pride? It says that Yah does what? Resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Mm -hmm. So when you walk around, you get to elevate yourself and feeling all this pride and stuff. The Most High, now the Most High, he has something he want to say to you. He's trying to speak something to you, and he can't speak it to you because there's all this too much pride in the way. So what does he do? Sometimes he'll go right on over to your spouse here because she's humble, because he can't say it to you. And sometimes he'll do just that. I've seen it in my relationship a number of times where the Most High will go to my wife and tell my wife some things, and, t and, t and I'll sit there and, and I'll be fighting, and he'll give it to my wife. And then my wife would come and say it to me, and I'd be like sitting there like like fighting it at first. And then I'd say, well, wait a minute. Let me look into this. And no kidding you, I've learned that you just got to let, you, you got to let up a little bit. 
Brothers, you got to let up a little bit. Sometimes your wife can have a million dollar idea sit right there in your face. And because you don't want her to say nothing, you to miss your blessing. You most I put it in her to give you this blessing. And you because you too prideful, oh, you to missed it now. You to miss it. And she'll be sitting there burning up on the inside or upset, saying upset, man, I know the most I gave this to me, but you just don't want to hear it because it's coming from me. And that's really bad because she's your wife. You should want to hear anything that she got to say. You know, you should want to hear it because you don't know the Most High could be doing it. He could be speaking to her, saying something to her because he can't speak to you. Because we're like that. We're full of pride. And that's that's really, truly sad. But I, I'm, this is why I love this man right here because he has um, humbled himself before the Father. And he's able to now repent of some of those things where he wanted me to be quiet or whatever he's he's been able to repent and he he acknowledged it here on camera you know how he was with some things and i'm just really i'm really happy about that because a lot of brothers wouldn't do that and a lot of brothers want their wives to continue to stay in that state of oppression um a marriage should not be oppressive okay That's right. coming from the man or the woman uh, a couple should be able to live in harmony together, and I'm not. We're not saying that there's not going to be problems That's right. or uh, disagreements or anything like that. What That's we're right. saying is, if if you allow the Father to bring harmony, you can move past that fleshly That's right. stuff That's because right. it's the flesh that causes this um, this dysfunction in the family. You, but it's the word of Yah that gives you that harmony that's right. to where you can come to an agreement. That's right. How can two walk together except they except be agreed? They agree. You know, one thing too I want to add, a woman and a man are supposed to have balance together. A husband and wife are supposed to have balance together. A wife actually brings balance to you, brothers. She brings balance. You know why? Because you have certain ways about you. And if you if if you don't allow her to um to balance you out, then you'll be completely unbalanced. Mm -hmm. mm. Now you gotta ask yourself, the most high requires that balance in order to get you from place to place. Because you can't get from place to place if you're not balanced properly. So you can't you you gotta understand what we're trying to say here and you gotta you you gotta allow this balance to be in your life. Because that proper balance, you can go a lot further. Imagine a vehicle, right? This unbalanced, okay? Let's say you got a truck, okay? Now, you truck drivers out there know what I'm talking about. Imagine that they tip all the way inside the truck only on one side, okay? So that truck is driving around with over a ton of weight just on one side of the truck, okay? But what do you think will happen to that truck? <laughs> One of these days that truck gonna go to make a turn and all that weight gonna cause that truck to do something crazy. May even have an accident. It's even like that in airplanes where they uh, cargo planes, they have to balance the equipment right in the cargo plane. Isn't that why they said um Aaliyah's plane went down? It's because it wasn't the car the plane wasn't balanced right with, with the equipment. So basically that's very balance is very important to a person's life. You, the wife brings balance to the man. They too should be one flesh. You understand that she brings balance to a man. So we can't get away from that as men. You got to understand that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm going to go back and finish up a little bit of this Proverbs um, to show you the kind of balance a wife can bring to your um, relationship. That's brothers. right. Okay, verse 17, it says, She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, and her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the staff. She stretcheth out her hands to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and deli delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in the time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom mm. <laughs> and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. 
Okay, she ain't a lazy woman. She she sees <laughs> things that need to take place in her house, and she makes sure that it's done. That's right. And I noticed my husband said, "Hmm," when I read the part where it says she opened her, her openeth her mouth with wisdom, with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. Whoa, 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 whoa. wait a minute. She's supposed to shut up though. Ain't that what it says? Keep your mouth shut. That's what the huh? brothers say. Don't shut. You see, keep them shut, right? See, that's why we got to understand, we got to use everything, we got to use these scriptures in context, okay? It doesn't mean that the woman's supposed to just be shut up, period, okay? So, in other words, don't say nothing to me when we're in the house. Matter of fact, it said in the church even when it said that. But see, we want to just shut the woman up completely. Ah, right, shut up. You got nothing to say to me around here, whatever. But notice, when she opens her mouth and she speaks, she speaks with what? Wisdom. What is this wisdom she's speaking? Mm -hmm. If it's wisdom, then it's coming from Yah, right? Absolutely. Or is that this her own wisdom? So what is this wisdom that she openeth her mouth with? How to baketh the breadeth? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How to haveth the babies? That's right. <laughs> is that the wisdom that's referred to? <laughs> exactly. So then we got to look at, you know, come on now. It even says in the next verse, it says that, and, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Mm -hmm. So, so we look at this. This is a woman that's just quiet. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we got to understand that um, this is a woman who who was just shut up in the corner somewhere. Okay. This woman is busy. She has a lot of things to tend to. She's not only tending to her home. She's tending to her kids. She's tending to her, her husband, and she's even out here in the field. She's out here in the, in, the, in the business district selling what? What did it say she was selling? Clothing and other things, selling linen her fine linen. You see, mm -hmm. linen and tapestry. And so, deliver girdles unto the merchants. Mm -hmm. My goodness, the, the way boy, some of these brothers make it is that the, the, as if this scripture ain't even in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know? Exactly. When when you when you hear some of the terminology that's used, it almost makes it seem as though we are to be these. I mean, of course, women are to be meek and humble. OK, but meek and humble don't mean stupid and dumb. That's okay? right. It don't mean that you're supposed to be clueless and know nothing and know how to do nothing. And you have to sit and wait for your husband to give you your next set of instructions. That's right. Um, um, father I mean, or husband or Lord. What am I supposed to cook today? Exactly. Um, uh, what, what, what am I supposed to do tomorrow? I don't know. Can, can you help me dress myself? You know, some of the brothers actually, actually believe that this is how we are to be. And I, I want to thank the father for my son over here because <laughs> my son, Elijah, is very wise when it comes to um, how he's supposed to, to be with a young woman. Okay, and how he's supposed to treat them. He understands that. And he actually cringes more than we do when he hears some of these brothers talking about um, the daughters of Zion in such a vulgar way. You know, we're, we're supposed to actually honor one another. That's right. Honor one another. That's right. Okay, when the scripture says, love one another as Christ That's right. loves the, love church. the church. That's right. And he says, um, husbands, love your wives That's right. as Christ loved the church. That's right. Um, if you love um, something or That's someone, right. you're going to treat that something or someone right. right. Exactly. A lot of y'all brothers treat y'all pit bull dogs better than you treat your wife. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> treat your pit bull better than you treat your wife. You got your pit bull sitting up on the couch, you got your wife in the kitchen working hard. You go in there with the, with the I bet you won't wish you can go back to the days of having a whip or something. Right, get that food cooked. You know, it's like, come on now. Let, let's be let's look at this thing right now. Mm -hmm. Come on now. You supposed to love your wives. You supposed to take care of your wives. You supposed to cherish them. That's what it says in the scripture. Cherish them. You see? Now, the, the scripture, who can find a virtuous woman? Her, her, her price is what? Far above rubies. She's priceless. And there are plenty of young women out there that, that, are, that are very good women. And they're learning and, and virtuous women even. Now, let, let me share some. Now, now, I want to ask you this question, brothers. Let's say, I want you to look at this situation I'm about to paint for you here. Because I want to hear what some of you all got to say about this. Okay? But let's say we got a brother 
who uh, just coming into um, the truth, okay? And he's been filled with the Ruach, the set apart Ruach, the spirit, okay? And his knowledge is very limited in the scriptures. It's very limited, okay? But he finds this Hebrew woman and he falls in love with this Hebrew woman and he wants to make her his wife and she's a virtuous woman. But she has been in this thing for about 10 years, okay? Her knowledge, she understands the scriptures and she knows all of these, these different things, that, the, the, the mysteries and understand all, a lot of different things in the scriptures because she sat under a good um, um, ministry maybe. Maybe she, uh, 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 she um, the most high blessed her and she was able to gather all of this knowledge and understanding and wisdom, right? So now you have a woman here that has more knowledge concerning him, concerning the most high than this other brother over here, okay? Now, think about this here now. Now, this brother comes into it and he tells this woman, uh, nope, you keep your mouth shut. I don't, don't, don't talk to me about the scriptures. You know, uh, you think about that. He's telling her to be quiet. She got more knowledge and understanding about Yah than he does, right? And here he is telling her, you shut up, you be quiet. You got nothing to say to me about the word whatsoever. You know, now, this woman... She can sit there and she can look at things and she can say, well, you know what? My goodness, he's going astray here. She can see him going off, going astray in the word, even into an area that looks very gloom. Okay? Now, what is she to do? She's supposed to just shut up and just say, okay, well, he told me to be quiet and let him just walk right off the cliff, huh? Huh? Or what is she supposed to do? Is she supposed to keep on talking to him? Keep on trying to tell him, well, you know what? The most I showed me this, and I just want to show you this. Don't you shut up, woman. I mean, think about what I'm saying here. You know, one thing I like to say this year is that my wife is a business genius. Me and her both been to business school, okay? And my wife is a business genius. I would be a fool to put a zipper across my wife's lips and tell her to be quiet. And you know what? I'm going to handle this business thing. Don't say nothing to me about this and about that. I, I, I got this, dear. You know, I got it. You know? And, and she could sit there and see me going into a, a something. And, and I would be a fool to just shut her up. You understand where I'm coming from? So I want to get you, you I want to get the listeners. I want you to tell me what you think about that situation. How is she supposed to be? And how is he supposed to be in that type of situation then? Absolutely. And uh, I want to expound on that a little bit um, because the scriptures that most of the brothers use to say that a woman is to be silent are in the New Testament only. Uh, we don't see it in the Old Testament to where it says it is, it's a shame for a woman to speak and all of that. It seemed like that just came about in the New Testament. And we know, I have to say this, that uh, the New Testament has been uh, greatly tampered with. Okay. I want to bring that point out because even in the New Testament, it also tells us it says, slaves, obey your masters and fear them as you would Yah. So technically, <clears throat> we were supposed to fear the white men when they were beating our brains in. <laughs> we were supposed to obey them and fear them as much as we feared the Most High. Ain't that what the New Testament said? Okay, I know a lot of people don't like to hear that the scripture have been tampered with. Okay, but it has been. Okay, um, I also want to point out that when... Shaul or Paul was talking about that. He was talking to Gentiles, okay? Um, the women of Israel no doubt knew the ways and customs of the Israelites. So if Paul was talking to Gentiles, he was basically, and, and the, of course I know that there's the argument that he was talking to Israelite Gentiles. Still, you they know, was living like Gentiles, though, right? But some people, <clears throat> some people want want to say that he was talking to Israelite Gentiles, but it's, it's very possible he was also talking to um, Gentiles that were not Israelites. Okay, and so in that case, he was basically saying, "Women, um, let your husband come and learn the ways of the Israelites, and then they will teach you." Okay, let them come and learn, and they will teach you. But for the Israelite women. We had grown up in our ways. We had known our ways. So that wasn't an instruction 
across the board, you know, that women of every nation, kindred, and tongue that was to ever be born on the earth, that you were supposed to keep silent. This was a teaching that Paul had for the Gentiles. Okay? And I know a lot of people will argue against that, but again, there was nothing in our laws that stated that the Most High don't deal with women. As a matter of fact, it's quite the contrary. There are many women throughout the Old Testament to where the Most High has shown, and we have shown you this in Scripture too, that where He does deal with women. He does speak to the women. He deals with the men too. And we also have to remember one of the curses that came upon the men that um, sinned against the Father. He said that the women would begin to rule over you. That was a curse against you because you didn't do according to His laws. He said that the women will rule over you. Well, that's how the Most High, I mean, it's evident in the scriptures that he's, off, he's often uh, worked like that to mm -hmm. where he, when he's trying to deal with the men and he couldn't deal with the men, they say, okay, well, well because of this, uh, the babes are even going to rule over you. Not just the women. He said babes are even going to rule over you. So part of the, uh, the thing that's going on in our society where you see uh, uh, women um, that are ruling over men, this is part of that curse, you see. Of course, the scripture tells you a man is the head. And don't don't get things mixed up. In no way are we saying that a woman is supposed to be the head of the man. Absolutely We're not. We're not saying that. I'm the head of this family. Absolutely. You see, I'm the head of my wife. Okay? So there, no one is saying anything like that. Okay? But we're simply trying to say that, that there's an order in the way the Most High does things. And that these teachings, a lot of the teachings in the New Testament... I'm sorry if you if you I, I I have studied Hebrew Greek. I've been studying some of the Aramaic scriptures, and mm -hmm. I know that the way they translated these the, the scriptures is quite different. Well, if you look if you look in the scriptures and you look at Abraham and Sarah and Rebecca and her husband, and and you look at um the people of the scriptures had they could say something. Look at Eve and look at Adam. Okay, Eve was able to go to Adam and say, now Eve, what she did was wrong. So I'm not advocating that she was, what she did was right. Okay, right. but Eve had a voice. She could go to her husband and say something to him. So when you look at the, the um, Western culture, it just seems like it's just totally different. You see, um, the men and the, and the husband and the wife, they control their environment. They controlled their kids. They ruled over um, their their uh, help that they may have had. Um, if they had servants or whatever, Sarah had had uh, servants and and what else did they call them? Um, the handmaids. Handmaids. That's right. So she was able to tell her have handmaids and help her with this and help her with that. She ordered them all around. She didn't wait on Abraham to tell all them what to do. And I'm willing to bet you that if there was a man out in the field that was working, right? And Abraham was the was was his but he was a servant to them. I'm willing to bet you that Sarah could have easily told him, "Hey, I need you to go over here and pick." If he was a servant of the household, I'm quite sure Sarah told him to go over here and get this and get that. You see, because she was Abraham's wife. So basically, I think that we there's just a big misunderstanding. I studied the scriptures. I've studied. Hebrew and Greek translations, and I know for a fact that if you if you were to dig into these translations, you will see that a lot that the Europeans when they translate the New Testament, boy, they had a time with it. There's so many just totally off. Old Testament. Too. Yeah, oh, there's some things in the Old Testament too, but especially in the New Testament, mm -hmm. there's some things that were translated a certain way to get you to think a certain way, to believe a certain way. And, and and that was their agenda, you know. They wanted Yahshua to appear white in the scriptures. They wanted um um the whole set of of our um um uh, way of life to be a certain way to appear a certain way. I do see that there that the translators were trying to push on a European type agenda on the scriptures. Okay, another thing I wanted to point out, too, <clears throat> is um, the way that the scripture has been translated in the New Testament, it really sways our opinions and thoughts on so many things. That's right. You know, um, there was one passage that talked about obeying the government, okay? When we looked up that term government, that wasn't the, that wasn't the proper translation. 
But when you put that in there, now you can control people. That's they say, right. well, the government said we have to do it. And the scripture, the Bible does say that we must obey the government. Okay, so we have to be very careful. Yeah. That's why we have to be led by the Spirit. The scripture said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the assembly. Okay, and um, just to backtrack right. a little bit too on the most high dealing with women. A lot of the brothers, I've dealt with a few brothers on uh, Facebook who can't stand to hear anything about our sister Deborah. They don't like to hear about that woman. <laughs> yeah. Because the scripture very clearly tells you that Deborah set up under a tree. And it says all of Israel came to Deborah to be judged. All of Israel. Okay? And a lot of people don't like to deal with that. A lot of brothers don't like to deal with that. One brother mm -hmm. even said, well, she had to get her husband's permission. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Now, Deborah <laughs> did have a husband, but the scripture didn't, didn't get off into all of that stuff about, oh, she got to get her husband permission. Um, um, a husband, um, the father told me to tell this one over here that, uh, well, uh, I permit you to do that. It wasn't even like that. It was no need to be like that because we all understood at that time, we understood what our roles were. And if the Most High was dealing with a woman, he dealt with that woman. You know if what? he was dealing with a brother, he dealt with that brother. Okay? You know what's funny, though? It's like the brother said she had to get her husband's permission. But can you imagine this here, though? Let's say the Most High is, is trying to move this thing, trying to work this thing right, and have these men come to the bar right. But can you imagine if her husband had to look at her and say, you know what? Uh, no. You can't assert authority over these men. You can't be a judge over these men. Now, this is something the most high doing, but this husband of hers can say, uh, you know what? Nope. You can't do it. You know? <laughs> I know it's possible that the most high, but you know what? The woman is supposed to keep shut shut up. <laughs> you can't be a judge over these people. Mm -hmm. Now, that would have just threw y'all's plan completely off, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm going to give, give y'all a New Testament <laughs> example. When Elizabeth was up in age and it was time for her to give birth to John the Baptist, her husband um, probably wouldn't have believed that she was really pregnant because she was older, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what did the Most High do to her husband? After he explained to her that she had this baby, what did he do to her husband? Shut his mouth. He shut the husband's mouth. <laughs> he made his, his tongue clean to the roof of his mouth. To keep him from saying anything negative about what the Most High had already shown Elizabeth. That's right. Okay? So a lot, of, a lot of brothers, we need to look at the scripture and rightly divide the word. Okay? That's right. Not every instant does the father go to the wife or not every instant does the father go to the husband. Every situation is different. We can't take right. one biblical story or a couple of biblical lines and just build our whole religion and belief right. system around that. Because there is just too many evidences in Scripture where the Father deals with the daughters of Zion and the, the men of Zion. He deals with both of us. Okay? That's right. We, uh, again, we understand the hierarchy the way it's supposed That's to right. be. That's right. We understand it. Christ is supposed to be the head of man. That's right. And the man is supposed to be the head of woman. That's right. Okay, but that marriage is supposed to reflect the marriage of, of, of Yah with his assembly. That's right. And it's supposed to be love there and harmony. It and ain't harmony, supposed to be all right. this hatred. Balance, that's right. Right, the, the man is supposed to be hating his um, wife and despising her. That's right. You know, um, I noticed there was a video I saw where a brother used Deuteronomy, I think, the 28th chapter and the 56th verse. It talked about how the woman's eye was going to be evil towards her husband, right? But I said, you know what? Maybe that brother, brother needs to back it up a couple of verses. Because what did it say a couple of verses back? Oh, yeah, back? that's right. What did it say a couple of verses back? That, um, Speak up louder, son. I want you to say it loud so everybody can hear you. It said that the, in the 56th verse, it said that the wife's eye was going to be evil towards her husband, right? But what did it say in the 54th verse? Absolutely. In the 54th verse, it says that the husband's eye was going to be evil towards the wife and the children. Yeah, but so they, why, they conveniently left that verse out, though. <laughs> why, why, why is it that we, we operate this way? Why, why are we trying to be deceptive so that we can make the other look bad? 
We have to understand we all came in on those slave ships together, y'all. Yeah. Okay, the men and the women were abused. Guess what? The men and the women were sexually abused, too, by our slave masters. That's right. Okay, so don't make it seem like the the women were just laid up there enjoying rolling around with masters because it didn't even go down like that. These women despised it, and the men despised it. We hated this ill treatment. So don't make it seem like that the black woman has turned and the black man is just suffering because the black woman has turned. No, it's not like that. If we can stop the blame game, yeah. both sides, if we can stop the blame game and come together and say, you know what, this is what has happened to both of us. That's right. Now, how do we move past this? Now, we got to understand moving past this is going to come from within us. That's right. We can't look outside to these other nations to try to fix what's going on among us. That's right. We can't look to our enemy. Many of us are looking to our enemies and That's trying right. to figure out what is plaguing us. We have to understand that our enemy is being that enemy. They, yep. they box us up, they, they, they abuse us, and they torture us and persecute us, and then they hide their hands. They hide their hands as if they have nothing to do with it. And then right. in some cases, they try to say, well, oh, what can we do to stop the violence in the black community? They don't care about stopping no violence in the black community. They put together a system to help perpetuate it. I know some of y'all think that's hard to believe, but it is true. That's right. And until we try to fix us among us and stop trying to invite our enemies into the circle, we're going to keep on falling by the edge of the sword. Simple as that. Simple as that. Yeah, we, we um, as men and women, as husbands and wives, we definitely got to uh, be in harmony and we got to come together and we got to be stronger. And, you know, we got to do um, Yah's will. Um, um, next week, we're going to cover the Ephesians portion of it. We talked about um, um, submitting yourselves one to another and we're going to cover some of those scriptures because it's very important that we understand the role of the husband and of the wife um, in marriage, you know, we covered today about the virtuous woman and just to show you that uh, a virtuous woman She ain't just in the kitchen shut up and just having babies <laughs> You know, so I want y'all to remember that remember what we talked about here and, and go and research these Look at these scriptures for yourself that we talked about here because it's very important Absolutely So until till next week, we just want to say shalom Shalom